All right, so chemical digestion. So the thing is that not every single part in your body that does chemical digestion has the same, digests the same chemicals and macromolecules. So sometimes you might get certain digestive chemicals and enzymes that appear at certain places, like where you have your stomach acid, your gastric acid, your hydrochloric acid in there. Do you have hydrochloric acid in your mouth? Do you have hydrochloric acid all the way in your large intestines? No, so some of these chemicals are kept in very specific areas. So the different parts of your digestive system, they specialize in what type of chemicals, what type of macromolecules they break down. So again, different areas specialize. You don't have the same enzyme all throughout your GI tract. You don't have the same chemical composition. So at different parts in your gastrointestinal tract and digestive systems, you have different chemicals and different pHs, different enzymes. So they all specialize in breaking apart certain types of biological macromolecules. So GI tracts, and we've heard this again, so when is your GI, it means gastrointestinal. Also, like I, I mean, they call it the alimentary, alimentary canal. So I think mostly anatomists tend to use this term, but just for FYI, alimentary canal equals GI tract, same thing. And I mean, if you speak, uh, if you speak Spanish, what, how do you, what is alimento? So alimento is like food nourishment. It has kind of nourishing kind of connotation. So yeah, same Latin root, alimentary nourishment. So it's the nourishment canal. So it's kind of poetic, but again, in the clinic, you probably hear people say GI tract. So going from start to finish. So where does food enter? Where does food exit? You already know that, right? So food enters via your mouth, your oral cavity. And then what's next? Then you have the pharynx. So again, this is a common path with the respiratory tract. But again, remember your respiratory tract goes down to the trachea. Now we're going behind to the other tube. That's not your trachea. You want your food and water to go down your esophagus. Again, you want that food again, or water gumming up your respiratory tract. So you want it going down the right tube, the esophagus, and then to the stomach then to the small intestine, and then the large intestine, and finally, where does food come out? It comes out via the anus. So again, this is a, so basically your GI tract is just a long tube. It just bulges in different ways, it's contorted in different ways, but it has a start and finish, and things should move in this order. Hey, that sounds like a good exam question, right? Okay, so again, runs from mouth to the anus. So here are the digestive accessory organs. So they're not the parts that actually form part of the tubes, but they're along the way. They're also important for both physical and chemical digestion. So they're not part of the forming that actual tube, but they're also very important in contributing to the overall digestion of your food. So then here we have, so it's interesting, like a few years ago they say like, oh, the mesentery, this is a new organ anatomist uh, discovered, and it's like, Actually, most anatomy professors probably already knew about this. We knew the mesentery was there, but this was an interesting one. Now it's saying like, okay, it's not just a sheet of connective tissue. It actually has consistencies. It actually has like structures right here. So the mesentery was always known. It's just like now they're saying like, okay, it's not just a random connective tissue sheet. It actually has structures that are pretty consistent. So the mesentery functions, well, one thing, you have all the, here we have the liver, here we have the large intestines, and all the intestines right here. So the mesentery, like if, what does it, well, again, you're moving around all the time when during your daily life. If you jump up and down, what if you didn't have something holding all your organs in place? So the mesentery, very important for support and keeping your organs or organized. So you're not going to, thanks to all these attachments, you're not going to get your liver exchanging places with your small intestines or your large intestines wrapping around everywhere else. So the mesentery is very important in providing structure. So these things aren't always sliding around among themselves. So then they also support vasculature. So the thing about your GI organs, where do those nutrients go when they digest it? Well, it has to go some, to the rest of your body, right? So you have a lot of blood going from the GI tract carrying these nutrients, but again, you need blood going to the GI tract as well. So the mesentery is a very important scaffold in kind of holding all these blood vessels and kind of like being, um, have you ever gone to, it's like seen the, past the drop ceiling where you have all these wires running through the ceiling? Well, the mesentery is there to kind of like help organize all the vas blood veins and arteries that supply your GI tract. So again, what else? 
and it's a hot topic in research. I think that's why I said like new organ, they tried to make it really sound exciting. So like, hey, this is really exciting. It's new, it's new organ, give us money to fund this. And then again, <laughs> scientists, we need money. Just generally it goes, why? Because it costs money to do experiments. <laughs> We're gonna co line our own coffers. It's like materials cost, I mean, things cost, <laughs> science costs money. So this is why we need money for, uh, federal really funding money and just money from any source to actually advance science but that's another other topic okay so histology I know everyone loves histologies <laughs> okay serious now okay everyone loves histology but okay so epithelia so this is some sort of outer layer right so something covering some body surface whether it's on the outside or the inside so breaking it down, either the epithelia of your GI tract, it falls into either two categories, either stratified squamous or simple columnar. Again, if you're start joined us this semester, this might be new to you. So the alimentary canal, the thing is that you always have food coming in your mouth, going through your GI tract, leaving via your anus. So think about your food. Have you ever eaten something like a panini or a rye sandwich where you toast it? and then your mouth gets really like torn up and raw from eating that very crunchy food? Well, the thing is that abrasion, that's what's happening. So but when you have something, any food you eat, even if it's very, I mean, maybe not jello, but typically when you eat some sort of food, it's actually taking off cells through your GI tract just by friction, just by the food rubbing up against the cells. Some of your cells will shed off and die and end up being digested with the rest of the things. So cells can scrape off any exposed surface in your body. This not only applies to the cells on your skin right here. So again, every time you rub up against anything or say you're skateboarding and then you fall and you get, you get your knee skin, you're definitely losing cells there. Same with the inside. So again, not just the external part, but the internal part can also lose cells as well. So outer surfaces and inner surfaces. And whenever you have that, so just like your skin cells, if you remember all the way back to the integumentary system, Skin cells also slough off, and they're also stratified squamous. So things like the mouth, the pharynx, and the esophagus, and the anus. So these parts that are closer to the opening and closer to the exit, these tend to be stratified squamous. Why? Because they're dealing with most of the hard part, the hard food particles or waste particles in your GI tract. So what is squamous? What's that weird word if you were joining us this semester? Well. Squamous, so cuboidal, a cube, uh, roughly, again, every side is about equal. So when you have a cuboidal cell, about the width of the cell is about the same as the height of the cell. It's not very exact, but this is how you contrast that with squamous and columnar. When you have a column in a room, it's very tall, but very skinny as well, right? So squamous is the opposite. Instead of being tall, it's very flat, and instead of being very skinny, it's very wide. So squamous, so what we have with stratified squamous is that Instead of having just one layer of flat cells, you have multiple layers stacked upon each other. So just your skin cells are very similar as well. They have many flat cells stacked upon each other. Same with the, these parts with the, the mouth, the pharynx, the esophagus, and your anus. They all have stratified squamous tissue. They're not keratinized like your extracellular tissue. But again, why there, are there so many layers? Well, again, it doesn't make sense to have one single layer. If anything, like a food particle scrapes this off, you're going to have raw connective tissue underneath. So this is why you need multiple layers of these flat cells so that you can regenerate them and you can also protect this sensitive area underneath. Now, alimentary canal, so was that the entire GI tract? No, so, by pro so this is how I memorize it. So the parts closer to the en entrance and towards the exit, that's the part that's dealing with the most roughest stuff. So the parts, everything else by process of elimination, the inner parts, that's in the middle of the GI tract right here. This is the ones that have simple columnar epithelia. So if you remember my analogy from last semester, again, columnars are very tall, but the thing about them, not only are they very tall, they also have a lot of volume. So think about a squamous cell, it's very good for protection, but you don't have much volume in that squamous cell. Whereas a columnar cell, it has a lot of volume, so the thing about having a lot of volume is that you have a lot of potent room for things like enzymes. So columnar cells also are very important in secretion or pushing chemicals from the inside of the cell to the outside or inside of your body. 
So columnar cells, that's what we have here. And it also is important in producing the mucins that make mucus as well. So that's why we have simple columnar epithelia. So the, cell, uh, the food here should be pretty soft or becoming soft once it gets to this part right here. And this is when you can, don't need protection as much. Now you need more enzymes, now you need more secretions to do chemical digestion. So ingestion, so again, 